This story is about two men that escaped prosecution by leaving Jamaica and migrating to London, England. While in London, they became informants. One confessed to 11, you know what, that he committed back in Jamaica, and the other confessed to seven. They would go on to help Scotland Yard in 150 cases against other Jamaicans. But for one of these men, because of his own criminal activities, he eventually was deported and sent back to Jamaica and was met by the relatives of all the Yardies he snitched on while he was in London. This is the story of Eaton Green and Delroy Denton. In 1991, Green landed in South London. He was on the run as he was a wanted man back in his hometown in Jamaica for doing horrible things. He came up living a hard life in the ghettos, in a world where your political affiliation could get you into serious situations. With the use of a fake passport, he settled down in Brixton, which is a district in South London. In the early 1980s, Jamaicans played a big part in the crack epidemic and violence that was running wild in New York and the other major cities in America. A few years later, the epidemic hit London, so by the time Green touched down in Brixton in 1991, his criminal mind knew only one thing. So he started to sell crack and cocaine by the bundle. He was a ruthless individual that carried a gun that he used on a regular basis. At the time, Scotland Yard was having a hard time understanding who are these people and how can police fight back against a culture of extreme violence and destruction like they have never seen before. Let's talk about Eaton Green. A few months after Green touched down in London, he went to a house party and bumped into another known Jamaican gangster. When they saw each other, the beef started and both men pulled out weapons and unloaded. Green got hit in the stomach and the other guy got hit in the arm. The men continued to wrestle each other while they were falling down the stairs, and by this time, both men needed a doctor, as Green's stomach was quickly getting worse, and the other guy's arm was broken from the fall and the lead stuck in his arm. Because of who they were, they couldn't call law enforcement for help, so they hopped in a car and ended up in a hospital where the doctors had to remove Green's kidney. When police got there, Green forgot he had some rocks in his pocket and both men were arrested. At the time there were no structure for Jamaican gangsters. It wasn't like the Italians that had a boss, an underboss, captains and soldiers. For the Yardies it was more like every man for themselves. So when Green was arrested he immediately became an informant under the direction of his handlers, immigration officer Brian Fotheringham and police constable Steve Barker. For this crime, he would never see a courtroom as he was now officially working for Scotland Yard. Green would continue to be involved in criminal activities while providing information for his handlers. In 1992, he was caught up in a raid with other criminals out in Shepherd's Bush. He was released on bail and magically faced no charges. So for him, it was back to the streets. In early 1993, Green was able to get his handlers to assist him in getting two other men from Jamaica into London. Those men were Cecil and Rohan. They were from the same background as Green. Each man was wanted in Jamaica as they both were responsible for the murder of eight people. Three months after they arrived in London, they committed the largest robbery Scotland Yard has ever seen. During a big private party in Nottingham, Five armed men ran into the spot and unloaded into the ceiling. They separated all the women to the left and all the men to the right. At that time, they separated each person from their money and jewelry, except for one dude that thought he was a tough guy. Green was a gangster, so he hit the tough guy in the foot. A few minutes later, the gangsters left and disappeared into the night. The Nottingham police began their investigation but Scotland Yard withheld information and made it hard for local police to locate and prosecute Green. The people that committed the crime were then all held responsible and at the first trial it became known that Green was an informant working for Scotland Yard. To become an informant Green had to talk about all his past crimes so that's exactly what he did. He admitted to 11 that he committed back in Jamaica and to multiple serious offenses during his time in Brixton. For a reduced sentence, he agreed to cooperate against the other Yardies that was part of the robbery. 
While the others received harsh sentences and deportation, Green was sentenced to six years in prison. His handlers removed him from prison and put him in a safe house. After learning what he did in Jamaica, Scotland Yard still didn't tell the Jamaican authorities. They were busy working on another Yardy informant. His name was Delroy Denton. In mid-1994, police performed a raid in a pub in Brixton, South London, and arrested a few Yardies. One of those men was caught with a weapon and some powdery substances. His name was Delroy. After his arrest, he met up with immigration officer Brian Fotheringham. That's the same immigration officer that recruited Green three years earlier. After three days of talking with Delroy, Delroy agreed to become an informant for Scotland Yard and was released from custody. He was given money and a government-issued cell phone. Like Green, Brian knew that Delroy had fought in the street wars back in Jamaica during the brutal years of political elections between Michael Manley of the People's National Party and Edward Siaga of the Jamaican Labor Party. Delroy wasn't just anybody, he was known to be a dangerous of an extremely violent nature. He was a suspected serial killer of seven women, so he illegally left Jamaica and claimed asylum when he got to London. By this time, he should have already been deported because his asylum request was already denied. Knowing all of this, Brian Fotheringham and his peers still thought the benefits outweighed the dangers. Seven months later, around December, Delroy did the unthinkable to a 15-year-old girl who was still in high school. The next day, the child was on sleeping pills and the act was reported to police by her mother. Delroy was then arrested. Two months later, somehow the charges were dropped due to insufficient evidence. Two months after that, a 24-year-old beautician and mother of two went missing. Her name was Marcia. A few days later, Marcia's sister found her. She didn't make it. She was stabbed 18 times. Delroy's government-issued cell phone linked him to the location, and once again, Delroy was arrested and charged with the crime. He spent four months in custody, and the charges again were dropped due to insufficient evidence. London police requested he be detained, but Brian and Scotland Yard wanted to continue to use him as an informant. Everyone, including the police, knew he did it, so they rearrested Delroy and again charged him with the crime against Marcia. More than a year after the crime was committed, Delroy was sentenced to life in prison. As you might ask yourself, why didn't Scotland Yard notify the Jamaican authorities about the man responsible for 11 murders that took place in Jamaica? See, Green and Delroy grew up at a time when the political party you supported would determine what part of town you could live in. Back in those days, the two political parties were like gangs. Each party was locked into a fight for money and power, and the winner would be determined by votes. So they would hire young boys and teenagers to go out and literally people who supported the opposite party. The money made from crack sales in New York, Miami, and London would make it back to Jamaica to support their favorite political party leader. So it was important for these overseas gangs to succeed. Well, Green and Delroy explained to Scotland Yard that while he was a young man, some of the people he killed was because he was taking orders from high-level politicians and he had no choice. So if Scotland Yard told Jamaican authorities, then he would have to be extradited and then when he gets back to Jamaica, he would be killed while serving time in a Jamaican prison. To Scotland Yard, it was more important to have Yardie informants that could help them fight other Yardies that infiltrated their country with a culture of extreme violence. As it turns out, Green helped Scotland Yard in over 150 Yardie related crimes, which led to hundreds of prosecutions. So while Delroy was serving life in prison for what he did to Marcia, Green was doing part of his six year sentence in a safe house. In 1997, Green had his deportation trial so he filed for asylum, making the claim that if he goes back to Jamaica, he would be He was denied asylum in 1999. It was reported that he was sent back to Jamaica and reunited with the families of all the people that he snitched on back in London. This was the story of Delroy Denton and Eaton Green. If you enjoyed this content, click on the next episode from Big City Crime TV.